So here's spinner 22. Uh, it's completely different than normal. It's vertical spinner. Uh, I forget the exact height, but we'll see here in a second. So let's scroll this back, take a look at the sketch. As you can see, the sketch is simple. You just have the bearing. You have this slightly smaller section, and this is used as a bearing stop because of the height of the because of the height of the spinner. And then the whole thing is 35 millimeters in diameter. So once that's done, it's extruded up. And let me take a look just to see real quick. It's 65 millimeters tall. So after that, I create a tangent plane across one side so that I can make changes to the surface of the cylinder. I create a new sketch. As you can see, there are the 6.2 to 6.4 millimeter circles that are placed uh, for the quarter inch ball bearings. I extrude that set out so that the ball bearings will just fit inside and the tolerances for this design are specifically for T-glass. Uh, so this is a nylon. Uh, after the balls are inserted, uh, the T-glass actually bend slightly in towards the bearing and secures it fully. So after this first side is done, I go in and do a create pattern circular so that I can duplicate that first pattern all the way around. Then I work on the caps and these are the standard caps that I've been doing. These are slightly taller. I believe these are about four millimeters tall. Uh, they're rounded over and then I'll just step through this and pull up the final basically it's the design I've been using for the caps for a few versions of caps now and it's the split design and it actually holds on quite tight um, the tolerance for these is made so that once it's fitted into the bearing it does not come out without breaking and that is intentional uh, as you can see this is the stop that's been placed for the bearing so that when the bearing goes in it doesn't go too far down just to make sure everything fits properly. And that is one of the extrusions that was through here. Let me actually walk up to that extrusion. This is done towards the end. Um, these are different than normal extrusions. Uh, if you've never done an offset, let me pull this over. It's two millimeters high for the actual extrusion, but since the plane is on the very bottom that it's sitting on, the plane for the extrusion is offset, in this case, 56 millimeters, and that's to pull it up to that point. You have the two millimeters there, which is 58, and then you would have the seven millimeter clearance for the bearing for the total height of 65 millimeters. All right, let's take a look at the other one. And this one has no weights. I guess you could go in and fill this with lead or aluminum. Probably wouldn't be a good idea to use lead, but it would melt it better. So let's roll this one back. And it's the same starting sketch as the previous. Uh, the tangent plane is placed so that I can do a single version of the design. And it's pretty simple, just a spline. It extends slightly to make sure I capture everything. And then I did some work on the cap. All right, so I'm to the point where I extrude in for that spline to do the first one. And then like most of the designs, it's circular pattern using the feature that is this extrusion to place it all the way around the perimeter. And then one side is a very tight chamfer. And the idea in this design was that if you blew onto the spinner, that it would spin. Now, whether or not that actually functions, we'll see when everything's printed and we check that out. And the final extrusions are those stops for the bearings when they're placed so that they don't sink too far down and then it combines so that it can actually create a proper STL. So even though they look different, they're actually quite easy to make. So let's see how well they spin. 
So here are the two spinners. Here is the one without any weights. Actually works quite well. I guess you could do it with one hand. Just not very fast. This could do that. It does spin. It's an interesting concept piece that you cannot blow on it to make it spin. So let's take a look at the other one. So this is the weighted version. There are 40 quarter inch ball bearings on this one. So there's a bit of weight. Spins. I would argue that one that's unweighted actually spins better. Which is kind of sad. So you can make vertical spinners. I don't know why you would want to make vertical spinners, but you can. I said you can't blow on this to make it spin, you can use a little compressed air. But that's not really a recommended thing to do because it could shatter and then you could have plastic embedded in your hand and your face. That could hurt, require stitches, and surgery. So don't do this. But you see how well it's spinning. And it makes a pretty noise. But don't do that. So, two vertical spinners. Until next time, keep designing.